grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, welcome to St Peter's Church. My name is the Reverend Tim Gage and it's great that you can join us today on the second Sunday in Advent. It's an extra special service today for a few reasons. Firstly, it's the first service that we can have back in church here after this second lockdown. But of course, it's great to have you uh, watching online or, or listening on the telephone as well. And it's also exciting because today is what we call an all age worship. So we tweak our service uh, so that it's extra appropriate for whoever you are, whether you're new to church and whether you're young or whether you're old. So we do hope you enjoy worshiping with us today. We're going to begin uh, by bowing our heads and asking for God's blessing on our time. So why don't we do that now? Let's pray. Loving Father, thank you for this time when we gather to worship you. Please be with us by your spirit. Please teach us and help us to worship you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you notice behind me we've got our Advent candles and because it's the second Sunday in Advent we need to light the second one. So we're going to do that now. Well this week Ben is going to be lighting our second Advent candle and then we're going to be saying a prayer together. So Ben if you'd like to light that now that would be great. There we go. Wonderful. Just hold that down and we'll say this prayer together. Just here. Lord Jesus, light of light, you have come among us. Help us who live by your light to shine as lights in your world. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. And we're now going to sing our first song together. With me, God is with me. Yes, he's with me every step With me, God is with me Yes, he's with me every step I know God is with me every step I go I know God is with me every step With you, God is with you Yes, he's with you Every step with you, God is with you. Yes, He's with you. Every step, I know God is with you. Every step you go, I know God is with you. Every step, know oh, the love of God is with me. King 
Now, because it's Advent, we're setting up here our nativity scene. And perhaps you're setting one up at home as well in time for Christmas. Now, if you don't have a nativity scene at home, don't worry. Uh, if you'd like to join in, what you can do is click on the link at, just underneath this video here where it says more info and click on that link and you can print out your very own nativity scene that you can colour and, and decorate, maybe put it in the window or have it out on display somewhere. And last week we heard about how the angel came to this person here. Can you remember who this person is? Shout it out. Well, if you shared Mary, then that's right. So we've got Mary in our scene, but who do we need next? Who goes with Mary? Well, if you said Joseph, then you're right. And it says this in the Bible. While Joseph thought about this, an angel of the Lord came to him in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, descendant of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The baby in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. You will name the son Jesus. Give him that name because he will save his people from their sins. All this happened to make clear the full meaning of what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be pregnant. She will have a son and they will name him Emmanuel. When Joseph woke up, he did what the Lord's angel had told him to do. Joseph married Mary. So what did God ask Joseph to do? That's right, he asked Joseph to marry Mary. And did he do it? Yes, he took Mary as his wife. Now, who is this? That's right, we've got a baby Jesus as well. Now, while Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn son. There were no rooms left in the inn, so she wrapped the baby with cloths and laid him in a box where animals are fed. So Jesus, the son of God, was born to Mary and laid in a feeding box for animals. It's a funny place to put a baby, isn't it? Isn't it incredible? that the God who made the whole universe from the tiniest creature to the largest galaxy becomes a small, weak, helpless baby so that people like you and me can be part of God's forever family. Let's pray. Loving Father, thank you for Joseph choosing to obey what you told him. Thank you that Mary gave birth to Jesus who came to save us from our sins. Please help us to always go wow that you loved us so much that your son Jesus became a weak and helpless baby. We thank you in his name. Amen. It's now the point in our service where we have an opportunity to say sorry to God. So we're going to do that now. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to have our Old Testament Bible reading and Erica is going to read that for us. Isaiah 40 verses 1 to 11 Comfort my people, says our God, comfort them. Encourage the people of Jerusalem. Tell them they have suffered long enough and their sins are now forgiven. I have punished them in full for all their sins. A voice cries out, Prepare in the wilderness a road for the Lord. Clear the way in the desert for our God. Fill every valley, level every mountain. The hills will become a plain, and the rough country will be made smooth. 
the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it. The Lord himself has promised this. A voice cries out, Proclaim a message. What message shall I proclaim? I ask. Proclaim that all human beings are like grass. They last no longer than wild flowers. Grass withers, and flowers fade when the Lord sends the wind blowing over them. People are no more enduring than grass. Yes, grass withers, and flowers fade, but the word of our God endures forever. Jerusalem, go up on a high mountain and proclaim the good news. Call out with a loud voice, Zion, announce the good news. Speak out and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah that their God is coming. The Sovereign Lord is coming to rule with power, bringing with him the people he has rescued. He will take care of his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs together and carry them in his arms. He will gently lead their mothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as we think about what we've heard in God's word, let's pray. Loving God, thank you for your word, the Bible. Please speak to us and help us to know and love you more as we think about it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we're in Advent, each Sunday from now until Christmas, we're reading in the Bible through the book of Isaiah. And if you were able to join us last week, you would have seen our first in that series. The book of Isaiah is great because it's all about God but it also makes some pretty amazing promises. And the most amazing out of all of these is that God will send someone with the nickname Emmanuel. Now, I wonder if you can remember what the name Emmanuel means. I'll give you five seconds to see if you can remember. Well, if you said God with us, then well done, you got it right. Last week in our reading from the Bible, we learned that because of Emmanuel, because of God with us, we all need God's presence with us. We need God to be with us. But this week we're learning that because of Emmanuel, God can comfort us. Now, when might you need comforting? Well, perhaps if you heard some sad news on the TV, or maybe if you remember something sad that's happened. Maybe if it's just because you're feeling lonely. And sometimes, actually, we feel sad and we don't really know the reason why. So sometimes we might use things to try and comfort us and, and make us feel better. What things might we do to make us feel better when we're sad? Well, we might have a favourite toy or we might like to give a good friend or family member a phone call. Do you know, all those things are great, but our Bible reading from today tells us that God wants to comfort his people. So let's have a look at our reading and see what God says. It starts, comfort my people, says our God, comfort them, encourage the people of Jerusalem, tell them they have suffered long enough and their sins are now forgiven. In Isaiah's day, God's people were facing a lot of difficulties. They had made some really bad choices by worshipping other gods. And because of that, life wasn't good. Their enemies were attacking them. They were going hungry. They felt like God must have forgotten all about them. But God wanted his people to know that he is the only one who can really comfort them. So what does God's comfort look like? Well, firstly, it means that God's comfort means that Jesus is coming. It says, a voice cries out, prepare in the wilderness a road for the Lord. Clear the way in the desert for our God. Fill every valley, level every mountain, the hills will become a plain and the rough country will be made smooth. Now, in Isaiah's day, when a king was coming to his city, 
the people would actually go out and get things ready by flattening down the road, removing the big stones and the rubbish that was in the way so that the king could travel easily and safely to his home. And that's what God is saying must happen as well. But who is the king that Isaiah is talking about? It's the Lord. It's God himself coming to the city. God hasn't forgotten about us. He's coming to be with us. And just like the people had to be ready for the king, we learn at Advent that we have to be ready for when King Jesus returns as well. We need to make sure that we're living our lives for King Jesus so that we're ready and that we don't need to be ashamed when he returns. So God's comfort means Jesus is coming. But secondly, God's comfort means he knows our weaknesses. It says, proclaim that all human beings are like grass. They last no longer than wild flowers. Grass withers and flowers fade. When the Lord sends the wind blowing over them, people are no more enduring than grass. Now, do you know what happens when you cut flowers and bring them inside, maybe as a, as a present for someone or just to look nice? Well, they look great to begin with, don't they? But after a while, after a few days, they begin to fade and flop and fall down. And God is saying that actually we're all a bit like flowers or grass. We start as a little seed and we grow up and up until we're like a, a, a beautiful flower. But after a while, we begin to droop and not look quite the same as we once did. And like a flower, we begin to fade. Now, hang on, this doesn't sound like very good news, does it? Being compared to grass or a flower. But you see, actually, it is. Because it means that God knows exactly what we're like. He knows we get older and weaker. He knows that things go wrong and that we get sick and ill. He wants us to know that, that our bodies don't last forever. They will all wear out. And God knows that too. That means that we don't have to hide what's wrong from God because he knows all our weaknesses anyway. Those on the outside and those on the inside that we keep hidden too. You see, God's comfort means he knows our weaknesses. Lastly, God's comfort means that he will take care of us. It says, he will take care of his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs together and carry them in his arms. He will gently lead their mothers. Oh, this is a wonderful verse, isn't it? That the powerful, almighty God, the king of the whole universe, cares for us like a shepherd looking after little lambs. Now, if you thought it was bad news being compared to grass, I think actually being compared with sheep is much worse. Let me tell you why. You probably haven't, but I wonder if you've ever tried to catch a sheep. I have, and let me tell you, it is not easy. Because sheep aren't actually all that clever. When you try and help them, they run away. When I was trying to chase after one, it was because it needed help. They don't normally want to be rescued, even if they really need it. And if a sheep gets lost and they see you, they won't come running back and follow you home nicely. The only way to rescue a lost sheep is to grab it, lift it up over your shoulders and carry it back to the flock. And that's what God does for us. A lot of the time we act like we don't want to be rescued by God. Sometimes we're selfish or proud or mean or don't care. And if God doesn't rescue us, then we can end up staying like that. But God's comfort means that he does care and that he will take care of us. So I'm now going to read our gospel reading and see if you recognise some of the words that Mark is quoting. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It starts, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, 
See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Well, so far we've seen that God's comfort means Jesus is coming. God's comfort means he knows our weaknesses. And God's comfort means that he will take care of us. But how does he actually do that? Well, our gospel reading that we just heard tells us. You see, it's Jesus that brings us God's comfort. John the Baptist just said, I've baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Now, lots of people went to John to be baptised as a sign that they wanted God to wash them clean from all the bad things that they have done. But John's job wasn't to forgive them for the things that they had done. That was what Jesus was coming to do. We can know God's comfort because of what Jesus did for us by dying for each one of us on the cross. And because he promises that whoever trusts in him will receive the Holy Spirit. That means that God will come to live in you, whoever you are. It doesn't matter how old you are or what you've done or how much you have. What matters is that you can know God's comfort in your life so that whatever you face, you don't do it alone. God comforts us because God is with us. Amen. We're now going to say the creeds together. It's a summary statement of what we teach in the church. And I'm going to ask you a question. And if you believe it, then I would like you to respond with, we believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're now going to enter into a time of prayer where some members of St Peter's will lead us in our prayers. Dear Lord, thank you for the food you provide for us and that we pray here people are lonely, have someone to spend Christmas with and even cook for them. We pray that you stay with us through the tough times. Amen. Dear Lord, please help people that are in need at this time of year and make sure they have a good Christmas with lovely presents. May they feel that the Lord has helped them in some way. Amen. Dear Lord, I pray for my teachers at King's who have had a stressful time during COVID-19. I pray that their workload decreases and they have a restful and enjoyable Christmas break. Amen. We also pray for Bishop Will, the Bishop of Lewis, and Sophie Perring, his PA. Father, please bless and encourage Bishop Will in the ministry that you've called him to here in this diocese. Please help him to pray and to support and encourage all those in his care. Amen. 
We also pray for those who live in King George the Sixth mansions and Edward Close, and for the rainbows, brownies, guides and their leaders. Amen. We also pray for those who are sick and in any kind of need, especially thinking of Daniel, Zoe and family, Doreen Elliot, Robert Delacour, Arthur Green, Nancy Holmes, Margaret Shepherd, David E. Evans, Michael and Betty, Daphne Bridal, Elizabeth Watkins, Leslie Jones, Simon Hill and Stanley Rogers. And we also pray for those in need of continual prayer, for Anne O'Neill, Linda Wallace, Peter Chapman, Margaret Dole, Jan and Roger, Alex, Chris, Marion Langton, L.C., Jackie Wood, Will Newman, Walter Beck, David Peters and Shirley Peters. And we remember before you, God, all those that we've loved but are no longer with us. We remember those who have died whose anniversaries are at this time of year. For Edna Picard, Evelyn Casemore, Primrose King, Edward Curvin, Ron Craden, Dorothy Evans, Eileen Goff, Beatrice Brenner, Jan Newton and Edith Tyswell. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
now going to lead us in the church's prayer for the second Sunday in Advent. So let's pray. O oh Lord, raise up, we pray, your power and come among us, and with great might help us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are stopped in running the race that's set before us, your grace and mercy has helped and delivered us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus, our Saviour, taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We well, thank you for joining us today on this second Sunday in Advent. I do hope that as we uh, finish this service that uh, those things that perhaps God has been teaching on us or putting on our heart, we wouldn't just forget about them once the service is finished, but we'd think about actually how we put them into practice, how we remember throughout this week that God is the God of all comfort. And uh, it's also uh, an opportunity for us to announce something very exciting that's going to be happening here at St Peter's in a few months' time. And that is that we are going to be having a curate. Now, um, if you don't know what a curate is, uh, basically they are a, a vicar in the making. So they've been uh, training for ordained ministry to the priesthood, and uh, then they are ordained as a deacon, and then they will uh, join a church and serve there for about three and a half years or so. And I'm delighted to announce that, God willing, if everything goes according to plan, uh, Jan Butter will be joining us here at St Peter's. Uh, he comes from over the other side of the Downs, somewhere. I'm not quite sure. I get lost any time I go over the South Downs. So somewhere over that way. Um, and we hope to be able to interview him both here in church and uh, online in a couple of weeks' time. And uh, we look forward to getting to know more about Jan and his family. And uh, we just pray God's blessing on them all uh, this time as they prepare for Jan to take up his post here as curate, uh, God willing, next June time, something about that. So uh, that's an exciting thing to think about, but of course we've still got stuff to happen before we get to next June. We've got Christmas and uh, we've been seeing that many people have been booking online. That's great. Now the, the seats are going quite quickly uh, for our carols, concert and readings on the 20th at 5 p.m. and also at our two Chris Dingle services on Christmas Eve at 3 and 4.30. So if you want to come to those and you haven't booked on yet, uh, please do go to the website, please do um, contact us uh, either via the uh, rectory office number or go onto our Facebook page and then you can go straight from there and pick what seats that you want to, to book for that, uh, for those events. And um, we can't guarantee that if you don't do that, that you'd be able to get anywhere to sit. So please do book on for those services. In addition to the two Chris Dingle services and the carols, uh, we also have a midnight mass on Christmas Eve and of course our Christmas Day family Eucharist on Christmas Day itself as well. So uh, do book on to those and it would be great to see you at one of our services over Christmas. I'd be planning to still put out uh, services online. Now I'm due to be going on paternity leave uh, soon at the time of recording this. Uh, Claire has yet to give birth, but uh, we're expecting our third uh, child along imminently. Um, so we will continue to be able to put stuff out online, hopefully, uh, for the foreseeable future. But I will be taking paternity leave after Christmas. So uh, at that point, we'll see what we can do. But there will still, of course, be our services as well. And I know Chichester Cathedral are producing services over the Christmas period as well. So if we're unable to make our own ones available, then perhaps we could recommend those or one of our neighbouring uh, churches here in Hove Deanery. Anyway, I've uh, spent enough, ti enough time speaking. Thank you for joining us. Let me close our time with a final prayer of blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you 
scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain amongst you and with all those that you love this Advent time and forevermore. Amen. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.